Hey gang, it's JC and this is the Daily Dose for Friday, March 11th, 2011, a combined venture with Mind Active in beautiful downtown Brentwood. We have archives at the top of the page. By the way, I'm going to tell you about that in just a minute. Also, we have eye candy along the bottom. Very cute. And I don't often use that word because we try not to be cute here. We try to have a little bit of edge to what we do. But every once in a while, something comes down the pike that's actually sort of cute. And it's a Charlie Sheen cute cartoon. So we put that on eye candy today and you can look that up. It's like one of those things you'll see and you'll send it to everybody you know. Uh, speaking of the archives at the top of the page, before we dive in, uh, because we got the dose on the air yesterday very, very late, so some of what was on yesterday's dose is going to be regurgitated here today, but there's a long explanation for that that I don't have time to go into right now. That having been said, if you go to the top of the page, there's two things up there. One's called the Wayback Machine, and the other one is called the Video Village. Now, the Wayback Machine, you're going to see everything from, oh gosh, Jennifer Blom doing the news back in 1986 uh, oh gosh, Whitey Herzog doing a window commercial back in 1988. Something that's been very popular, the demolition of the old barn 12 years ago, the old arena, February of 99. We also have the Sliman Brothers. We also have an old TV commercial for Casey that Smash did when he was much lighter and much hairier. Let's leave it at that. Smash, we love you, you know that. You see Charles Jaco uh, putting his gas mask on. While there was an air raid in the middle of the night on CNN when Charles Jaco worked there. Something that's just amazing. The closed circuit feed from the Oval Office of the White House. I still can't believe I was getting that in my own living room just as Bill Clinton was getting ready to go on. Wait till you see the dirty look he gives the makeup girl. And uh, even uh, me pitching at a fantasy camp at Bush Stadium and striking out Randy Hundley. Now, if you go to uh, the Video Village... We have a lot of really cool stuff there, too. Uh, me with Mr. Whipple. Remember the guy who said, don't squeeze the Charmin? That went all the way back to 1985. We have an interview that I did with uh, Woody Allen. You have one of those goofy um, television series that the news departments used to do back in the 80s where they would do like this big, huge expose on local radio. This was done on uh, KTVI uh, Channel 2. Uh, by uh, a gal by the name of Catherine Bliss. You see me doing an interview with Andy Rooney when he was 74 years old back in 1993. Me with Wayne Newton in Vegas. A really cool five-part series we did back in 1986 where I spent a week just hanging out with Pat and Vanna at the Wheel of Fortune and behind the scenes backstage. It was really, really cool. Uh, my interview from 1988 with Leslie Nielsen, Phil Collins, Michael Douglas, Albert Brooks... All of that stuff is up there. That's the video village. And then we started talking about the Wayback Machine. That's up there, too. Go check that stuff out. It's right on the top strip up there. We put a lot of really cool stuff on this website, and we hope that you are enjoying it. We had Sally Wade, uh, the Big 550 yesterday. Trish Gazelle and I do the show from 10 to 1. And Sally Wade is the gal who uh, was with George Carlin for the last 10 years of his life. And she wrote this book. And to say it's a book is a little misleading because it's almost like a coffee table book. Because what she did is, uh, you know, George Carlin, it turns out, with this incurable romantic. And he used to write love notes to her all the time. And she collected them all, put them in almost like a scrapbook form. And, and, and there it is. It's just fantastic. It's called, and if you like George Carlin, you got to have this. And I know a lot of people just loved George Carlin. He died about three years ago. And uh, this thing is called The Carlin Letters, The Permanent Courtship of Sally Wade. And if you're a Carlin fan, must have it, absolutely. All right. Um, yesterday, we talked a little bit about this, but as I said, we got the dose up very, very late in the day. And I just want to go over this again because it's sort of important. And, and, and basically, it goes like this. The radio industry lives and dies by ratings. Okay, the ratings come out, you know, the, well, it used to be they come out four times a year. And you would get jobs, keep jobs, get bonuses. Radio stations would change format. I mean, basically, everything that four times a year came out by this company named Arbitron ruled the radio industry. And the way it used to work is that you'd get a little diary in the mail and you'd fill out, you know, the stuff that you listened to. And there were flaws in the system, unquestionably. So about two years ago, industry-wide... All across the country, this Arbitron company, these people, it's the only, they got a monopoly, it's the only guys who do radio ratings. They came along and they said, we're uh, going we're to change the way we do this uh, because the technology has improved. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to contact people and then we're going to give them a little thing to hang on their belt. It's about uh, maybe like three times the size of an old pager. So it's actually sort of bulky, I mean, about this big. You hang that on your belt. 
And then you go around all day, and all radio stations, in addition to what you can hear, also broadcast, in essence, a subsonic signal. And what's going to happen is, is that box that you wear on your belt is going to, as you go through the day, it's going to hear those subsonic singles, signals put out by radio stations. And instead of having to write down what you're listening to, this little box is going to hear that and it's going to record it all day. Then at the end of the day, you uh, take it off your belt and you put it in a little cradle where it recharges and at the same time uploads all the information that it gathered all day and sends it to this Arbitron company. They put it in their computers and you know then they collate and graph it and weight it and do all those things that mathematicians do. And then at the end of the month, we're going to tell you who's listening to what. Okay, interesting, because what they basically said is, we're going to try and save money. That's what we're going to do, because they cut their sample way down, because they thought they could. And there's nobody in the radio industry who's got any balls to get in their faces and say, no, we want a valid uh, summary of what we're paying, like millions of dollars a year to you guys, to take these ratings, and uh, and you can't use the ratings unless you subscribe to the service. You can get a lot of trouble using radio ratings if you haven't subscribed, and it's really expensive, seriously, like, you know, over a million dollars a year for radio stations. So um, the, the, the people immediately said, well, well, hold on, wait a minute, you know, for any valid survey, whether it's a presidential poll or, you know, just any sort of poll or survey that anybody does, you got to have the largest sample possible. And what you're doing is you're cutting way down on the sample. That's no good. And then you got a little box on people's uh, uh, belt. So that's not going to record what people are listening to. It's going to be recording what a box hears. So let me just give you a scenario. You go to the bread company and you sit down and you have a two-hour conversation with your best friend. You have some lunch and some soup and some salad. Well, there's a radio station playing out the speakers. It's basically telling you that you listened to the music the personalities, the commercials, it's telling the rating service and it's telling advertisers that you listened to all that. You didn't hear a word of it. You were occupied with something else. You go in and buy a carton of cigarettes to get the radio on, it's basically saying that you listened to that radio station. You didn't listen. You went in, you bought what you were going to get, you got out. It's ridiculous. So there's like all of these uh, questions about the validity of this new system. Well, 57 days after that new system was plugged in. That's right, I said 57 days. The guys who I worked for up until about two years ago pulled the plug on my radio show. And they said, well, you know, uh, the, the new rating system is uh, telling us that not only are people not listening to you in the morning, but get this, people don't listen to morning radio anymore. We have always been under the impression that the big, huge audiences are there from 6 to 10 in the morning. And it turns out, according to this new rating service, um, people aren't listening in the morning. Of course, at that point, I said, you're insane. You're crazy. And to make a long story short, radio stations completely revamped everything. The, the industry has been turned upside down and shaken out. And I was one of the people shaken out of it. Okay? And they just pulled the plug on the show and they started playing music. They're trying to compete with iPods, which is a stupid idea because there's no bad songs in an iPod because you're the dumbass who put all the songs in. Also, there's no commercials on an iPod. And also, uh, when, you know, if there were, there certainly wouldn't be eight minutes of commercials twice an hour, which is what radio stations are doing right now. And, and so it just doesn't make any sense. The whole thing is just stupid and doesn't make any sense. Now, I've said all that. To get to this part, because now, after about two years of this, um, a very respected broadcast media services company came along, and they talked to a bunch of these people who have been wearing these things on their belt. And by the way, I'm sure like if you're a 25-year-old woman and just fa fashion conscious, I am so sure that you're going to hang this bulky thing on your belt and walk around with it all day. I mean, it's just not going to happen. I mean, there's all sorts of things where people go, wait a minute, this doesn't make any sense. This isn't going to work. Anyhow, long story made short, if that's possible at this point, what they have done is they've talked to these people and they found out that the whole thing is a sham. For example, the, there's a sensor in these little boxes that people wear that if they're not moving, people think that you've taken the thing and shoved it in the drawer and you're not using it. And then they call you up and they go, hey, you're not using it. And you go, yes, I am. So one of the guys, just to get more, and you get more points, if you get more points, you get more money. 
the more you use this thing, the more they think that you're using it by uh, moving it around a lot. This is crazy. This is insane. So one guy uh, reveals after they did the survey, because you know, they wanted to find out how was this thing working. And he said, yeah, well, they told me as long as it keep moving, uh, I get more points, I get more money for participating in the survey. So the guy taped it to his ceiling fan and turned it on and then left the house. And the thing's going round and round. This is incredible. Uh, another person said, uh, oh, yeah, I, I, I gave it to my you know 17-year-old daughter. It's like the only problem is... This guy was supposed to be representing like 45 to 55 year olds. So now, instead of when the thing comes back, they've got it in listening to like uh, Lady Gaga and stuff like that, radio stations that play that. The whole thing is just is just absolutely crazy. And the most important part of this whole thing, this is what I've sort of led up to. They started really asking these people. So just tell me something here, because we have noticed that morning radio listening seems like it's way way down in their canceling morning shows all over the country and people are getting fired and letting contracts run out and they're telling people just to play music because that's the only thing you can do. Just tell us a little bit about that. And, and so the more and more they found out, they found out this. The people get up in the morning and they shower and they shave and they have breakfast and they get their kids off to school. They read the paper. They get themselves dressed. And then, and then they go over to the wall and they unhook their cell phone that's been charging all night, and they take the audience measurement meter out of the cradle, and that activates it. And they're like, well, hold it, wait a minute, wait a minute. You, what time did you get up? About 6.30. What time did you pull the thing out of the cradle to leave for work? Oh, I pulled it out of the wall about 20 after 8. Well, what were you doing for those two plus hours? Oh, I was listening to my favorite morning radio show. Dumbasses, idiots, morons. So the industry, the radio industry has been turned upside down. All of these changes in morning radio, all these people let go, all this crap being put on in the morning because it's a huge flaw in the new system that radio stations use to, uh, to look at their audiences and how big they are. Because people have them deactivated charging overnight in the cradle, and they don't even take them out of the wall until they leave for work at 8.30 in the morning. These are the idiots and morons that I've been working for in St. Louis for the last 27 years. So now the question becomes, um, how long before they admit their mistake and put everything back to the way it was, the way you like it, might take longer than you think. Might not ever happen. All right. Charlie Sheen doing a live show, a la Conan O'Brien, after he lost his show. Only two dates scheduled so far, April 2nd, Detroit, April 3rd in Chicago. Tickets go on sale over the weekend. Kelly Preston, who's married to John Travolta, she was engaged to Charlie Sheen until he accidentally shot her in 1990, says he's really, really a good guy down deep. And Gallagher, remember the guy who, the comedian, goes up there and smashes watermelons? He's 64 years old right now. He collapsed. He reared back with his mallet and and, and blacked out. And they had to rush him to the hospital. Uh, I want to see Kathleen Madigan. Uh, she's on television this weekend on CMT. Ron White Celebrity Salute to the Troops. Watch that. And that Rat Pack thing that was recorded back in the early 1960s with uh, uh, Sammy Davis Jr., Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, and Johnny Carson filling in for Peter Lawford, recorded at the Keel Center back in the 60s, is going to be running on Channel 9 all weekend. Uh, it's going to air tomorrow night, Saturday night at 5.30 and 10 o'clock, in addition to 11.30 tonight, Friday, on Channel 9 here in St. Louis. We're going to go over the 4,000 mark on Facebook, friends, this weekend. Thank you very much for that. JC's Eye Candy today is that Charlie Sheen thing. You can look at it right there. That's it. JC's Daily Dose for Friday, March 11th, 2011, a combined venture with Mind Active in beautiful downtown Brentwood. In the meantime, we've beaten this one to death. Have a good one. See you later. Bye.